With Morph, you can do some pretty exciting things. But the first thing to consider is that it's not just about content on the slide you can see all the time. Here, for example, we have the start of a classic Shakespearean quote brought to life. To be or not to be. That, though, is not the question. The question is, how do you do it? The first slide has the image, the to be text, and a grey box. The second slide has the image, the or not to be text, and an orange box. Clearly, the image is the same, just shifted a little to the left, so that it moves slightly during the morph transition. The coloured box is also the same object, just altered from grey to orange and shifted from right to left, so it changes colours and moves during the morph transition. The interesting thing is the text, because the or not is not on the first slide, and yet for morph to work, the objects have to appear on both the first and the second slide. If you look closely at the transition, the or not text appears to fly in from the right. You can achieve this with an animation effect, but the animation would only happen once the transition is complete, so the timing is off. Instead, all the text is on the first slide, but the or not text is off the edge of the slide. It's not visible in show mode, but then appears to come in from the right as it moves from its off slide position onto the slide. Having objects off slide is a great way to bring them in or take them out using Morph, and it's really easy. As an expert level tip, you also need to think about where the object is off slide. Its position off slide will impact where it enters the slide as objects move in a straight line from point to point during the Morph transition. So in this case, we want the text to be lined up so that it's all just moving left to right and right to left. Another consideration is distance. You may never have thought that your high school physics would be useful in presentations, but remember, speed equals distance over time. The morph transition time is the same for all objects, so the distance it has to travel will determine the speed. As the to be text is all the way on the far left of the slide and moves to the far right, you want to ensure that the or not text off the slide has to travel the same distance, which is why it's all the way over on the right, not just tucked away neatly off the slide. Here's another example that uses off slide content to bring elements into the slide and also take them out of it. As you go through the sequence, you also realise that the slide uses visible elements in different layers to achieve an effect of revealing or hiding other content. Going into edit mode, you can see here the text off slide initially, on slide the next, and then off slide again. It's aligned horizontally across the first pair of slides to achieve a horizontal motion and then aligned vertically across the second pair of slides to move the text down during the morph transition. Here you can also see the chart graphic off the slide. It's small and to the left. On the next slide, it's on the slide larger and over onto the right, so that during the transition it moves upwards and to the right and grows larger at the same time. There are also elements used as masks with layered content to achieve reveal and hide effects. For example, there's a small white box on the left of the first slide which expands on the second slide to be a placeholder for the text. Likewise, hidden away underneath the architectural photo on slide 2 is the building sketch, which moves down out of its shadow on the third slide, producing both the reveal and movement effect during the morph transition. By changing your perspectives, there are many different ways you can introduce content, all using Morph.